Bar. Welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career, and or business. Cam Napier, Editor-in-Chief of Pacific Business News, was our guest on our last show, and his words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services' website, newmanconsultingservices.com, or our landing page, danelia.org. Our theme for today is the P's to success in business and life. Our guest today was on our previous show, and there was so much fabulous information on the critical success factors in business and life that was shared that we invited him back. Joining us today in the studio as our honored guest is Reg Baker, a national recognized expert on small and mid-sized businesses. Mahalo for joining us this morning. Oh, it's great to be back. Hey, Reg, oh, good hi. to see you. Reg, share with our viewers, if you will, a little about your background. I have, well, not to bore people with too much detail, but I've been in Hawaii since 1973. I've oh, okay. uh, been here for quite some time. Uh, went to HCC, Hollywood Community College, went to Manoa, UH uh, Manoa campus. Um, spent some time on the mainland with uh, Price Waterhouse in LA, mm -hmm. uh, specializing in consulting with financial institutions. Okay. So we were setting up asset liability management systems and working with uh, different companies to define the metrics that they needed in order to be more successful, to mm -hmm. give them the benchmarks. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, eventually came back to Honolulu with Ernst & Young. Uh, I was the uh, manager on the Bank of Hawaii job. Uh, the Bank of Hawaii asked me to join them. I ran international operations for a few years and I ran their trust operations. Then I went out and started my own practice and been kind of focused on the small, mid-sized business marketplace for the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. okay. That's great. Wow. We like to always tell a little bit about the background so that it qualifies you to talk about the P's to success, right? And that's exactly our topic, P's to success in business and cool. life. So let's go ahead and start with that conversation. We want to get right into it because there's lots of P's to success, right? Well, you know, it's been an interesting process. I uh, started coming up with some of my little trigger points and some of my thoughts, you know, from a variety of different things that I've done over the years and tried to make it as simple as I could. And I started out with five Ps and mm -hmm. then it grew to seven Ps. And uh, the more I get into it, the more Ps to success I, I'm finding. So I hear it's morphed to 18 now. It's up to 18 <laughs> Ps now, <laughs> which is a really amazing. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. And it's not that everybody has to memorize all 18 right. Ps, but mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, and some will be more relevant to yes. some people and some businesses and to others. Right. And so it's just you know, a, a, a kind of a fun way to, to define some of the things that you need to be paying attention to as right. you grow a business. So what's okay. our first P? You know, I've been asked, what's the most important P? Okay, that's a good, that's a better question. Well, Go for you know, it. Well, well, wait a minute. We don't want to rush into that, okay? We've got, we've got a show to do here. Let's, let's start from A and go to B, all right? All right. Well, I don't have any A's and I don't have any... I got a lot of P's. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Let's, let's start with the P. But, you know, I, I tried... And one of the P's is prioritizing. Okay. okay. You know, um which is kind of what we're playing with right now, is Correct, that which yeah. one of these 18 Ps are the most important, which yes. one comes first, which mm -hmm. one comes last, and a lot of it depends upon the, the business and the person. Mm -hmm. There are some people that have tremendous strengths in certain areas, mm -hmm. and maybe not so much in other areas. Mm -hmm. And so their first P might be different from somebody else who has a different mix or a different mm -hmm. skill set. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it, it just makes sense to kind of go through the P's and see which is most important mm -hmm. to you at that particular time. Mm -hmm. I'd also suggest that sometimes those P's uh, move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, what's important this year may be a little different next mm -hmm. year. Correct. Okay. You know, Correct. But so, prioritizing sounds like a good place to start. Well, prioritizing is was one of those P's that I just recently added because oh, okay. as the P's were getting bigger and bigger, I asked myself the same question. Which one is the most important? Which one should we start with? Well, let's talk about prioritizing because, you know, one of the things I personally find is that when I've got a really lot of projects going on, it can become very overwhelming. And that's exactly when you need to prioritize. One of the biggest challenges and something that um, you know, as we, d we do consulting, and, and one of the things that we really look at is somebody's desk space. 
if you walk in every morning to a desk space that is filled with stuff everywhere, it's already overwhelming and you are still, and you are not really prioritising your, your um, tasks and you end up doing not much of anything all day. So we strongly recommend that you prioritise your desk. You know, I like to put everything in one pile and then just go through it and prioritise it. Sometimes you need to just take a deep breath and take a break and then come back and recognise which one's more important than something else at that time. You know, and everybody has their own approach mm -hmm. to setting their priorities. Mm -hmm. And again, different people have different priorities for different mm -hmm. sets of circumstances. But I think part of my process is what's the worst thing that could happen in each one of these different priorities mm -hmm. or these tasks that I got to accomplish. And if the results are really bad for this one and maybe not so bad for this one, mm -hmm. I'm going to pick the one that's, that it could have the most negative um, effects on me or my business mm -hmm. and make that my priority to get mm -hmm. done. If I had to pick one task to do, which one would that be? Mm -hmm. That helps me set the priority. And mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier, delegating, getting, you know, delegating some of those tasks to others who can assist you because sometimes we always, sometimes we have a tendency to think, well, no one can do it as good as us. When in fact, hey, it could be close <laughs> and that it, will still that's work. exactly <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. nobody... We all have expectations for ourselves, yes. and we set the bar pretty high. Yeah. And we're usually pretty good at hitting that mark. Yeah. Nobody will be able to do that exactly like we do. Mm -hmm. So we have to be realistic, mm -hmm. or one of the P's is practical. There you go. In setting the bar for our employees and the people we work with. Is it, you know, if we set the bar too high, we're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And practical is a major, major P. Mm -hmm. because you can have a pipe dream and we don't want that to intervene in what we're doing. That's right. You got to be, you know, it's not a P, but realistic is part of being practical and, mm -hmm. and you know, what's possible, maybe another P, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so, you know, to be practical in, in setting our priorities and doing a delegation to the people and making mm -hmm. sure that they have the skill sets. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may have a long list of priorities. We know what our skill sets are, mm -hmm. but when we start delegating out our tasks, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that our tasks meet their skill sets and mm -hmm. it's a practical uh, assignment to make. So true, because if we don't focus on that, we find that we lose employees or employees are unhappy. Um, and sometimes it's just because of that lack of communication as to, you know, what th what they can do really well. And just like us as business owners, we have those areas we do well in and there are those areas that we need to delegate, you know. And so you need to know your staff capabilities mm -hmm. and know who you're delegating jobs to. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't put a person in a, in a predicament, you know. Don't give them something that you, that they can't perform. Right. And to motivate them sometimes you do need to challenge them occasionally mm -hmm. but you have to make sure that they have the tools or the training to get it done mm -hmm. and so you know understanding <coughs> what their skill sets are the pluses and the minuses mm -hmm. and be able to complement that with some training mm -hmm. you know it keeps them motivated and focused mm -hmm. and also other uh, part of part of having a business is all the employees working together you know we love the fact that our staff, you know, if someone's lacking in an area, they'll ask somebody else and they'll help. And, you know, that's really what it's about, teamwork. So that's all a part of, of that P as well. It is. Yeah. No, you got to, you know, performance. Right, performance. You know, you got to, you know, monitor everybody, communicate mm -hmm. what the expectations are, mm -hmm. um, give them the chance to show how well they can perform. Mm -hmm. And if they need help in performance, then. Mm -hmm let them, you know, give them that help and let them show them their, their, their ability. Mm -hmm. um, great motivation, particularly with some of the, the, the younger folks that are mm -hmm. coming in now. They, mm -hmm. they want to be able to prove themselves quicker. Yes. You know, they don't have the patience. Patience, mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, maybe some <coughs> more mature people would have. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so true. And as you were saying that, uh, you have, when you give a, a staff member something to do, uh, a task to perform, you, you have to provide that, that training too. Uh, have, have you done that before you've given this person something to right. do? You need to know if you provided that person with the proper training to be able to accomplish it. And that's where the, the planning and mm -hmm. the preparation mm -hmm. okay. comes in because you've got to, you know, when, as you're making these assignments, mm -hmm. you got to kind of 
plan a little bit as to who should get that assignment. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to prepare that person for that assignment mm -hmm. to, to communicate maybe what the expectations are, what the uh, performance level is. You know, mm -hmm. this is really what I want you to be able to accomplish. Are you comfortable doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, and you know that planning and preparation become two important P's at that stage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, what's the next P? Well, there is an interesting one that we can probably have a little bit of fun with. Mm -hmm. I think it helps to have a you know be a little psychotic. A little psychotic. Boy, <laughs> that's a really good <coughs> subject. So we're going to come back to that. Uh, we're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with Reg Baker regarding our theme today, the P's to success in life and business. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Aloha, I'm Kaylee Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. If you want to be an informed citizen, we invite you to watch every week as we bring wonderful guests together on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m. We talk with people who know what they're talking about when it comes to the economy or the government or to building a better society. So we'll see you then on Ehana Kako, which means let's work together every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at ThinkTechHI if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Reg Baker regarding our theme today, the P's of two, success and business in life. I'm Danelia. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back. Now, Reg, let's pick right up where we left off, you know, with... Uh, Psychotic, uh, wasn't it? With, Psychotic? Oh, oh, hold on a minute. Yeah? Uh, well... Am I, okay, I've got to hold on? Yeah, you've, All got, right. you've got to okay, hold on. Okay, that's a part of P uh, yeah, yeah. in life and yeah. marriage. Yeah, and preparation. You know. Preparation. Yeah. Well, okay. Patience, right? And patience. <laughs> <laughs> patience is the key. Pa I like that. Patience. Have some patience. Okay, dear. yes, dear. Okay, Reg. And that's a good one to remember, yes, dear, in marriage as well. <laughs> Have patience, my dear. Oh, so we stop with psychotic. Let's pick pick back up on that. Right. Well, that's that's one of the P's that we can have some play full time mm -hmm. with. P is another playful is another mm -hmm. P. Mm -hmm. There you go. But psychotic is is kind of interesting. They say one of the definitions of success is a psychotic on a mission. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know a good example of that would be Jobs over at Apple. Yeah. He had a reputation, yes. and he was borderline psychotic yes. in his attention to detail and getting oh, yes. into micromanaging things, mm -hmm. and you know, and look at the results. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, you know, being a psychotic on a mission is one of the definitions of success. You've mm -hmm. got to be totally passionate. You got to be psychotic about mm -hmm. making it work. Mm -hmm. You know, to you know, reaching that level of uh, perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe practical perfection would be a better, <coughs> you know, definition. But yeah, you got to be a little bit uh, over the top sometimes if you're going to make your business or your life. Mm -hmm. as because some as of some of be. life's major breakthroughs have been done by people that was labeled psychotic. They are, and I'm, you know, I'm not using the clinical definition. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of using a. Um, 
a high level of passion. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be viewed as being psychotic mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, particularly by people who don't understand it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's a tweetable term, a high level of passion. I like <laughs> that. I, like that. Well I done. think business owners that at some point in their careers have become a little, you know, non-clinical psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and that's not a bad thing. No, I mean, not at all, because it's, it means that you have a lot of passion. You're focused yeah. on what you're doing. You really, and actually, when you have passion, you, you actually love what you're doing. And that's a part of life. Well, and some of that is, is just providing some very high level of customer service. Right, right. You know, I mean, you don't want to be like everybody else. You mm -hmm. want to be better. You want to yeah. do more. And, you know, sometimes, you know, getting to that level requires a little extra effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where the psychotic, you know, tendencies yeah. tend to come in. So well, you tend to think about work, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about what you've done, what you haven't done, what you can do, um, you know, and that all contributes to that non-clinical term. Yep. Right? It does. Okay. Yeah. What's the next one? Well, you know, we've got some that are probably not so playful, but one is, one P is playful. You yes. got to play with things a little bit yeah. mm -hmm. um, and see what mix works the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can't be 110% focused without having a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise you're going to lose your employees. You, you're right. going to probably lose some of the passion. Right. You know? And so having some playfulness, mm -hmm. I think, would be good. Playing with the formula a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. to see what mix works well. Um, particularly in the branding and the advertising area, mm -hmm. you know, the promotion, mm -hmm. you know, when you're promoting the, the product, mm -hmm. you know, the business, or even just your own personal brand, you know, that promotion requires some playfulness. You know, try the Twitter, try the Facebook, try the LinkedIn, try the different avenues to different types of advertising, you know, mm -hmm. you know and just play with the mix a little bit, trial and error, if you will, and see what works. Well, it's interesting, playful also, I think, um that is so true, but also getting back to the office environment, you know, we've seen business owners walk in and not even say good morning to their staff mm -hmm. when they walk in and they just make a straight beeline straight for their office, close the door, never to be seen again, you know, and so that affects everybody in the office. So, you know, it's really when, when, you're, when your staff are giving their 100%, they're giving their best, and then the day starts off that way, it really limits the business, it limits the staff in so many ways mentally. Um, so we just strongly encourage playful, I think that's a great P uh, to success in business and life, mm -hmm. you know, is laughing a lot, really being able to laugh at yourself. Um, you know, one of the things that John and I attribute a successful marriage to is the fact that we laugh a lot. We really, we really enjoy each other. We really enjoy life, and we feel the same way in our in our work environment. You know, we take that to the job. It's a great way to reduce stress levels. Yes, oh, yes, so true. And your staff members need to know that they can be playful. You mm -hmm. know, and that's mm -hmm. something that that's lacking in, in quite a few businesses. You know, mm -hmm. it can be too stern. Yes. Uh, atmosphere and that uh, that's not productive well and that leads to another P personality oh yeah you know what's the personality of the company you know yes. call it culture call it whatever you want but mm -hmm. for me and, and I'm psychotic about P's mm -hmm. you know you know what's the uh, personality of the, the company mm -hmm. you're overly passionate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> overly passionate not, not psychotic <laughs> so you know but every company is going to have its own personality yes. mm -hmm. you know and, oh yes and it would help if you were able to define what type of personality you wanted to have mm -hmm. and then take some active steps to, to cultivate that and mm -hmm. to make that happen. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because when we're dealing with, with the personality <coughs> of the business, what happens a lot is that the, when, when you see a company, a lot of the personalities of the employees match the personality of the business owner. You, you attract what you are, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you see that in different companies. So if the business owner is really playful, um, passionate, uh, all of a lot of the P's that you've already mentioned, you find that a lot of the employees are the same way. Um, if, the, if the business owner is kind of uh, Real low key, Monday. doesn't you know, man, you know, doesn't laugh a lot and so forth. You find that that's what you attract as well in business. Well, and sometimes that happens for survival. True. You know, the employees need to start 
and and kind of become a little bit of a, a clone of the owner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if the if the owner of the company or the manager of the department doesn't allow creativity mm -hmm. and doesn't allow people to be playful, mm -hmm. then in order to survive, they have to become a mirror mm -hmm. image of that yeah, person. Yeah, mirror, mirror modeling. That's, but that's something also, that happens in life. You know, that's, they, also, mm -hmm. that's also unfortunate because that's when we tend to become unhappy too. Yes. Right, and so uh, individuals become unhappy in their in their jobs and their careers because of that stifling. Mm -hmm. And we do encourage supervisors under to understand that just because you have an employee who might know something that you don't, that's that's a definite reflection of you because they will work with you and you will grow together, and that's really important. There's a, a playful little you know snippet that I, I like to use, but if you hire everybody in your own image. Mm -hmm. And somebody's redundant. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Well, we always well, say well, that about marriage too. We well, tell well, people quite a few people are redundant. Yeah, <laughs> but we say that about marriage too. You know, if what happens is that when people marry somebody who's just like them, they're bored after three months. And if, when they marry someone who's totally the opposite to them, they're ready to strangle them after three months. You know, you've got to work that out. There's a balance you know? in there. There's somewhere. a balance in there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another P. Um, you know, we can play with professionalism mm -hmm. a little bit, okay. yes. you know, and, and that's part of the personality and mm -hmm. the, the culture of the firm. But, you know, sometimes people tell me that they, they have a hobby mm -hmm. and they've taken the hobby and they're making money at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's not, they don't take it serious. They're, mm -hmm. they're having some fun with it and, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But if they want to take it to another level and they want to be able to create something that they can be really proud of, mm -hmm. then they need to have a, a little dose of professionalism in there mm -hmm. because maybe it's not a primary source of income for them, but it is a, a, a reflection of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's their brand, mm. and if they're wanting to get you know respect mm -hmm. for what they're doing, then they need to be a little bit professional about it, and and hold some certain standards and and do things uh, that they're going to be proud of sharing with people. Mm -hmm. When we when when we teach uh, uh, what you just uh, talked about, as far as we also interject presentation, mm -hmm. professionalism. Uh, walks hand in hand with presentation. Yeah, that's another P. I'm going to add. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. But, but they, we, we, that they walk hand in hand. Your professionalism and the way you present yourself uh, dictates professionalism as no. well. Yeah, it does. Okay, no. it does. You know, and some of this is, is you know, some of the other P's can mm -hmm. be kind of mundane, but pricing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is another Very one. True. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you price your product? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be the price leader? You want to be the price follower? Mm -hmm. You know, I've had some clients that I've worked with that complained about cash flow challenges and, mm -hmm. and different other ailments that they might have. Um, they hadn't had a price increase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in yes. years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, or they were underpricing, busy, mm -hmm. really busy, but they were the low price option, mm -hmm. um, although they were delivering a quality product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we went through the, the exercise of just doing a little bit of research. We were able to increase the prices by four or five percent, mm -hmm. still under the competition, mm -hmm. didn't lose any business because they couldn't go anywhere else or mm -hmm. they didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they ended up getting a nice little bump in cash flow with hardly any effort at or cost increase at all. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know sometimes people are just so adverse to looking at that mm -hmm. as a possible solution. They just they're afraid of losing the business. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. You know, uh, and there's there's ways of doing it that can minimize that or right. eliminate it. Right. What do you feel is one of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome in your career and or life? I guess um, persistence. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes everybody gets tired once yes, in a while. That's true. You know, and and sometimes it's healthy to take a break. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you don't have to feel that you have to do something every day, every mm -hmm. week, maybe every month. Mm -hmm. If you need to, to have a little bit of downtime, catch your breath, recharge your batteries. Um, but the main thing is to be, you know, persistent. Mm -hmm. To keep trying, to keep working at it. 
um, you know, tweak the model a little bit, be playful with it, mm -hmm. you know, like go maybe in a slightly different direction. But at some point, if you're patient mm -hmm. and if you're persistent, you'll find that right combination mm -hmm. to keep things going. It's, I'm in, a, in the best spot that I've ever been in mm -hmm. in my career right now. It's great. Okay. And it, it's taken me 30 something years yeah. to get there. Yeah. It's a journey. And I've played with the formula, <coughs> I've played with the direction and the yeah. brand, I've done different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's gotten me to the point where I'm at now. And to be very blunt, I'm very happy right yeah, now. That's great. It's, it's see, I, I do but, see, you know, Reg, I've known you for a little while now, so I do see less wrinkles and less, you know. Okay. <laughs> less playfulness. <laughs> but you've gotten to the point, you've brought us up to the point uh, as, as this is key to success. And our signature question is, what, is, what are your top three success habits? For me personally, I never stop learning. I always want to learn something new. Um, and whether it's relevant or not to what I'm doing, uh, it, it keeps the brain exercised. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and it, it, you know, so learning is an important part to you know, having that inherent curiosity mm -hmm. about things. Uh, and you never really know when something is going to be applicable. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly if you're dealing with a lot of different types of customers. Mm -hmm. You know, there may be that one key customer that all of a sudden you just hit on something, that, a topic or a, mm -hmm. a subject that they are really into. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you've got a different type of relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that learning aspect. Mm -hmm. okay. um, another, <coughs> another one is that I, in, how do you, I guess, define success? Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be able to have some sort of a um, a metric or some sort of a performance mm -hmm. standard that you're looking for. Um, you know, happiness is kind of a, a tough, you know, type of thing to, to manage or to, right. you know, um, count. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but what's my benchmark? Mm -hmm. What are my performance metrics? What am I trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And that also changes. Right. I, I remember many, many years ago, I had a very large company okay. and uh, we were doing 7,000 returns a year, mm -hmm. and I was very happy. Right. I would not be happy doing that anymore today. Right. Okay. Well, Reg, we're out of time. We'll have to wrap it up. Reg's, Reg Baker's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services' webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com, and landing page, danelia.org. Thanks to you, our viewers and listeners, for tuning in. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Nick Sexton, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. Thank you, Reg, for joining us today mm -hmm. and sharing your insights to success. And thank Tech Hawaii. Forgive me. Thank Tech Keys to Success. We'll be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. So please tune in again and ask your friends and family to do so as well. And you're going to leave with a positive quote? Okay, and today we'll, our quote comes from Daryl Carnegie. And it says, success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm another half of the duo, John Newman. Aloha. Aloha.